Hi, and welcome to section 7 on face analysis and filters. So you saw in the previous section, we actually were able to use our casket classifiers to quickly identify faces in an image. However, we didn't do much with those faces after that. Well, that's what we do in this section. We actually use some new libraries to do some complex facial analysis, and as well as apply some very cool filters, just like your favorite apps. So let's take a look at what exactly we'll be doing in this section. So we'll be using a new library called dlib to identify facial landmarks in pictures of faces, which is pretty cool. Then after we'll be merging faces together to produce sometimes scary results. And then that brings us to our seventh mini project where we implement a live face swapper using your webcam, to produce some very cool and again, scary results. And then after that, we'll be doing our eighth mini project, which is a face reader. It can actually detect and count how many times you yawn. So that's pretty cool. So let's first talk about what, what makes face morphing or face swapping hard. So we saw it using hard cascade classifiers with our face detection. We can simply cut someone's face out of an image pretty easily and quickly. However, if we wanted to make a face swapper between Hillary and Donald Trump, it would not work at all doing that method. It would just look horrendous like this. However, apps like Masquerade and Snapchat are doing some very advanced face swapping or adding very cool face filters here. And in fact, Masquerade simply by doing face filters was actually bought by Facebook for 35 million US, I think. So what makes this possible? So what actually makes face swaps or face filters hard is actually getting the image, images to align correctly. So what I mean by align? Suppose we wanted to merge her face with her face. You would need to align these key facial landmarks highlighted here, eyes, nose, mouth, cheekbones, and eyebrows, onto her face. So we'd have to apply some warp perspective as well to actually get it to, uh, to morph into her face properly. Now, in order to do this quickly, you're going to have to develop some sort of method that can actually identify these key facial landmarks quickly. And that's exactly what many researchers have been doing over the years. So the technique we're going to be using in this section was actually developed by two Swedish computer vision researchers, Kazemi and Sullivan. They developed this paper called One Millisecond Face Alignment with Ensemble of Regression Trees, which actually does facial landmark recognition very, very quickly. And you'll see it shortly. So if you recall, I said we'll be using DLib to do some of our facial landmark recognition. Well, this method was actually built into the DLib library. So that's what we'll, we'll be using soon. And I can show you some quick results of how it works. So this is Hillary's Clinton's face overlaid onto Trump. It's pretty good actually, and pretty scary. This is Donald Trump's face overlaid onto Hillary. Actually looks very realistic, but also very scary. So we'll be having some fun doing some more face swaps soon. So before we actually go ahead and install and use DLib, I just wanted to reiterate what is actually a bit hard about doing this face swap here. So what's involved here is that first we have to identify the facial landmarks, which is what you saw previously here. And secondly, we actually have to now warp the new face onto the existing face. And then we've got to do some color matching. So we actually have to make sure the face lighting is correct here, which is why Donald Trump's face has a kind of bronzish tint here, yet it looks very similar to Hillary Clinton's face here. And then we have to create some seamless borders. So those are the edges where we've actually cut the face on. So it actually pr looks pretty smooth in this picture and as well in this picture here. All right, so actually now let's go and go ahead and install DLib and start using it. So I'm going to quickly show you how to set up DLib for use in Python. So firstly, let's visit this link here, SourceForge. So let's bring up that link and that link is also available in the IPython notebook for lecture 7.1, available right here. So you download DLib here, and version 19.1 is the latest version that's out right now. So when you have the, once you have that file downloaded, you can unzip this file into this folder right here. And that brings it up this folder here. And now to basically create the bindings for Python, you just run this setup file here. So you just go, you click it and open it. It brings up that little terminal window there. Hope you saw it quickly. And that's it. DLib is ready for use in Python now. It's actually quite easy. And the second part of the installation now is downloading the pre-trained model for facial landmark detection. So the next step is actually downloading the pre-trained model and you just go to this link here and that automatically downloads this file for you. And what you do with this file, you just place it in your default folder where your Python exe is installed. As you saw previously, you can just import sys 
and run some commands. I'm going to show you that quickly. So just run this sys.executable file here and you'll see where your Python exe is installed. So you place that folder, that shape prediction model folder line mark file, sorry, place that folder in that same directory where your Python exe file is there. And that's it. So once we do that, we're going to run some examples now in, well, using dlib, and it's going to generate some facial landmarks just like this here. So we're about to do this in a few minutes, seconds. I um, just want to show you quickly what's happening here, though, so you'll understand it in future. This landmark detection gives us 68 facial key points or landmarks. And what it does, this is the order here. So mouth points are 48 to 61. You can see that here, starts at 48 here and goes all the way to 61 somewhere. And then there's right eyebrow, that's this range here, 17 to 22. Similarly for left our eyebrow, 22 to 26, and actually this is a slight mistake here, it's supposed to be 21, actually. And similarly, the rest of the ranges here indicate different key, point, key points along the face here. So that's actually how this landmark detection works, and it gives these points here. So we'll use that in our future projects, but for now let's actually just start playing with dlib, doing some simple landmark detection. Also, just want to note in future, in case this link ever goes dead, I've uploaded this file in my files, my source files for this course. It's in the folder called Shape Predictor 68 facial Face Landmarks. So you can also access that file through there. Thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and open the code for facial landmarks. That's lecture 7.1. And the first thing you'll notice here is that there's a copyright notice on this code. And that's because for this section here, I'm actually reusing some of the code that was available on Matthew Earle's GitHub and his website. He actually has a very cool educational blog post about how you actually do facial landmark detection and merging of faces. So I do encourage you to visit his site and take a look at this. His tutorial is a bit more detailed than the one I have in this course here. However, I do try to make it simpler for you guys. So anyway. This is a copyright notice, so if you're using this code in any commercial project, just remember to keep this notice in the comment section of the code. And that makes us now ready to actually implement our face landmark detection, or facial landmark detection. So let's go ahead and run this code to see what's going on. And in a matter of seconds, we'll have identified yes. So it's the same picture I showed you in the presentation, where we have President Obama, current president right now, and basically, all the landmarks have been detected fairly well here. So lip, bottom lip, top lip, nose, eyes. Everything seems to be in order, so that's pretty cool. So let's actually see what's going on in this code. So the first thing you may have noticed that's different is that we're importing dlib here, so that's a must. We need to use dlib in our code, so we have to import the package. And now we have, we, we're have creating a string variable here called pat, predictor pat, that stores this string here, which is the name of our file, our mo model file and then we're loading that model here. So we're creating our predictor object here and then creating our detector object here by calling dlib.shapePredictor and we have the path for our predictor file and then initializing our detector here. So now we have some classes here that are used for exception handling when we have too many faces or more than one face or no faces at all. So we have two functions here as you can see, one called getLandmarks and if you can infer this function is basically going to get facial landmarks once we send an image into it. Uh, one thing you should note, I'm going to comment this code a bit more for you guys, so the actual file you might be seeing here in your files that you downloaded with the course materials will have a lot more comments that will help you step through this file on your own if you wish to do so. But I'm still going to explain this code without the comments for now. So what this function does here, get landmarks, basically it takes an input image, which is the image with the face, we assume, that has a face in it, and it runs the detector here that takes two arguments, one and the image itself, and gives you rect rex. And rex are basically is an, an array where we have faces that have been detected. So just the boundary, the bounding rectangle of the faces again. And annotate landmarks is basically how we plot the numbers onto the face. So that's where the CV2 put index Function, um, function, yeah, does, and basically, so it actually also puts circles at those points too as well. And basically, let's see what's going on here now. So we load our input image here. We get the landmarks using our get landmark function here, and we then annotate those landmarks. So once we have our landmarks file here, 
which is returned here, and it's actually returned in a NumPy matrix array here, which you may, this line may be a bit confusing. If you have some detailed understanding of NumPy and arrays, you would understand what's going on here. It's just the way we are reformatting our, our array that it can actually use now in annotate landmarks here. So we have our image and our landmarks, and then we're just plotting them here. So this function returns an image here, return I am here, and this image here does have all the landmarks in it. So quickly, and also we actually write this to our hard drive in case you want, wanted a hard copy of the file itself. So let's run it again. And there we go. So we have used this, this code here to identify 68 facial landmarks on faces. So now let's actually create something more complicated. Let's actually use this facial landmarks that we just extracted from that picture there to actually merge two faces together. So let's see how that works.